Yo, 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 what's up? This is Coop Diddy. Welcome to the Water Ski Podcast. Yes, uh, my name is Coop Diddy. I am the host of the show for today. The show name is Learning Water Skiing with Coop Diddy, and that's exactly what we're going to be doing today. Um, I'm going to have my guest on. You may have heard of him before, but he is the founder of the podcast, Matteo Luzeri. He is a dear friend of mine and a dear friend of a lot of yours, I'm sure, as he is a prominent name in the community, um, and I'm excited for this. We've been talking about it for quite some time now, uh, getting to sit down in front of the mics and discuss water skiing. It's a sport that I'm very interested in um, from watching him do his work and work his wonders on the water, and uh, just from a psychological performance aspect, I am getting my doctorate in counseling right now at Florida State. That's how Mateo and I met, was in the sport and exercise performance psychology program at Florida State. So a lot of reasons I'm interested in learning about skiing. I think it's a dope sport, very cool. Um, seems to be extreme to me, but we'll we'll talk about that in the podcast along with a lot of other topics. Uh, the goal was to discuss water skiing to a novice, which is I, and I think you'll, if anything, if nothing else, you'll get entertained by the podcast. We had a lot of fun with um, with our hour and a half, and uh, I learned a lot. So I'm hoping that some people that are new to the sport will learn as well. And for those of you that are seasoned veterans in the sport, you'll you'll hear what it's like for Mateo to explain some things to a a dummy. All right. So without further ado, I hope that you enjoy this podcast as much as we did recording it and uh, enjoy. I think obviously the first place to start is to say that it's an honor to have the founder of the podcast on okay. on the show. And I wanted to establish before we get started, because this is something that you and Marcus talked about in your podcast. I can curse during this. Yeah, right? explicit. Okay. We'll make it explicit. Because it's got to be. Oh, you, okay. Sounds good. Well, actually what I was thinking is, could we start off when I say like shit, you bleep it out? I it's gonna be quite a lot of work on on me, but I mean just at the beginning. Okay. And then like halfway through, I drop a fuck, <laughs> and and it just comes through, and there's no bleep. Okay. You know, a little shock and all. Like, wait, I thought this was. I mean, it says explicit, but it started out edited, and then it switched into a, into a just, big gigantic fuck. Yeah, just. Right, you know, out of nowhere, out of left okay. field. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll figure it out. Because I'm all about the shock and awe, okay. you know, which is, I think, one thing that drew me to my interest in your sport is I feel like there's a lot of shock and awe in the sport. Would you agree with that? Shock and awe. Yeah. Can you- when I first went to watch the tournament here at Lake 38, I was in shock at how fast you motherfuckers were going like <laughs> right, it was, right, right. it was unbelievable. And I was in awe that y'all can turn your bodies. Like, I don't know my degrees. Let's see. Well, it'd be like 120 degrees. That'd be pretty, yeah, pretty uh, accurate. I would say, yeah. 120, 130, 120 yeah. 130 going yeah, we're leaning. Yeah. I mean, there's some serious lean. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Leaning. That's what that was the all. Okay. So the shock was more of the speed that you're being whipped around with. Okay, yeah. And the awe is, wow, these guys are able to get back upright after, you know, leaning. Somewhat, like, it reminded me of, like, you ever seen Michael Jackson? Do yeah. His, like, dance where he leans. Like, I, he had to have had strings attached to his body. You think so? Well, and then, I mean, I would assume the same with the awe, but... Well, we hold on to a string-like thing. That's right? true. Um they, you know, sort of, you know, swings us from one side to the next, and we're trying to catch buoys. It's a bit different than Michael Jackson, but... It's, well, there's a lot to take in there. You're trying to catch buoys? Yeah, well, I mean, turn buoys. 
right? Right. Is that catch? Is that like a uh, inside? No, no, it's not an insider's inside, term. No, no. no. Is turn. that just what the cool set, cool kids say? No, no. I was just trying to use non-skiing language. Oh, but, okay. All right. Because I'm not it, sure. You know, I'm trying to learn here. But I think exactly. Well, I think one of the things that'd be best is for me to use ski language. Right. And then you ask me, hey, what the hell is that? Exactly. And then we go from there. Exactly. That's why I was trying to clarify about yeah. catching buoys because I was like, if I go out to the lake and I start saying, let's catch some buoys, are people going to be like, this guy knows what's up? Well, I mean, yeah, or, they don't understand what, the hell what is you're he up talking? to. If you're okay. a ski lake, they don't understand what you're up to. Yeah. So you are you said you were swinging back and forth. Mm -hmm. So it's like a pendulum? Yeah. It is, it is kind of like, so you saw it, you know, you came to watch a tournament Lake 38. And so you're two, two, sorry. Yeah, I two. just had to clarify. Yeah. Two, two tournaments. Yeah. Um, so imagine the boat being this, you know, the place where the pendulum string is attached right. and the, your pendulum being the boat, like the skier, the skier does that motion, right? Six times in order to catch the buoys. So you swing out to the left Oh, yeah, catch. Is Sorry. Catch yeah, again. I again. like it. To, uh, to gonna, turn the buoys. To catch turn the buoys. on. Yeah, catch there. means like it feel, yeah. almost feels yeah. like they're they're bowing down and grabbing the right. ball. No, yeah. no, that's what I mean. You ever want to do that? Sometimes. Really? Yeah, sometimes. When you're that early and you're like waiting for the ball, it makes you want to just slap it. You know, just slap it. Yeah, yeah, yeah slap nice it. little aggressive. Ever backhand? You ever think about? I'm just <laughs> no, bitch no, slap. No, this. Generally, generally, it's fast enough to where I go like, you know, forehand. Yeah. Okay. Nice little tap. A little tap. What know. would happen if you tried to grab it? I think a crash. You, know, you crash. Probably. Because so. the buoy, what would ha I mean? It depends if the buoy is attached, which is generally attached to the gr to the bottom of the lake or to a cable system. Then I would just like get stuck there. But that that involves me managing to actually, to actually grab, grab it. it. Yeah. Have you ever tried? No, not to grab. T to hit, yeah. Be successful a few times hitting a buoy with my hand. Nice, you know? nice. <laughs> at, and it, would you do that at like a lower when you have more? Yeah, generally. So there's this thing you, you saw like when you're turning buoys, you're letting go of the outside hand and using the inside hand to get a bit more reach to the ball. Right. But one of the cocky things that some people do in the sport, and I, I say I do it too, so I'm oh, not nice. taking my say out. Yeah. Uh, at your first pass, whatever rope length or speed, if you're – if you skid that well into six ball, which is the last buoy, mm -hmm. um, that you're so early, then you actually use your opposite hand. So you let go of the uh -huh. inside hand, and then you touch the water with the with the inside hand. And some people just hit the ball. They do. Yeah. And keep going. Yeah, and then they grab the handle, and that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, it's a bit of a cocky move, I would say. That's that's interesting because I like. The cocky moves in sports, like my favorite <laughs> athletes, Deion Sanders. He was, you know, as cocky yeah. as it comes. So, what other things can you do that's like arrogant when you're like little show off moves? Little show off moves. Um, like in slalom, I think I would say, you know, like yeah, the six ball reverse hand. Um, what else? Six ball. Like yes, this the last buoy. Six ball. Okay. A five ball, four ball, three ball, so, two ball, one ball. Oh, okay. So you name them off based off because you're skiing this course. Yeah. And there's six, you got to clear six buoys. Yep. And there's three on one side and three on the other. Correct. But how do you know which, like, the sixth one is the last one yeah, or the, you count down? No, no, you count down. No, sorry. No, six ball is the last one. Okay. So you go through the gates. Remember the two red buoys? You cut yeah. your first cut. Right, yeah, so, but you don't have to go through that. No, you have to go through that. That's an like, option. No, no, it's not an option. You have to go through. It's the like the uh, the white line in in uh, jump in uh, track and field. If you go above, your jump is doesn't count. So if you like, you're like fuck this gate. I'm just gonna go where I want to go. You and get you zero ski buoys. all six. You get zero. What? Yeah, yeah, you get zero. Okay. So you have to make it through those two red buoys, and then you turn one ball to the right. Do two you, to the left, three to the right. What if you're opposite footed? Can you go the opposite direction? See, that's an interesting thing. No. So, no. So you still start the gates. You cross them going to the right all the time. You cross the gate and then go to the right buoy. All the time. The yes. right buoy is always one. The right buoy is always one. That's the, that's the slalom course in water skiing. Now, 
some people have played around, and actually recently, Freddy, you've met Freddy. Yeah, yeah. yeah so Freddy, uh, a few weeks ago, plopped some buoys on the other side and actually skied a reverse course for a few days. What? Yeah, reverse course. So nice. cutting the gates to the left, Yeah. and one ball is on the left, yeah. and six ball is on the right. That's pretty cool. So basically, he's right foot forward, so he fell. He's right foot forward. So that means his right foot's on top of the ski. Yeah, and he's in front. Yeah, on top of the ski, and the left one is in the back. Okay. Right. So that means his strong foot, is he's left-footed? or No, he's right. Well... <laughs> That's an interesting one because it depends on, you know, uh, it's not really handedness. It's kind of like the blocks in track or what foot you kick a soccer ball with. It's a bit personal. Um, but, yeah, so Freddie is right foot forward. Okay. So he's left foot. We'll, is in we'll come back to that, but I want to hear the story. Yeah, so basically he, he started skiing the opposite course, literally f- skiing it the way a left foot forward skier skis the regular course, right? Skiing the way a left foot forward skier would ski the course. Yeah, so think about it. Like, if you're left foot forward, right. you're crossing to the right, right? You're in your offside pool, meaning that your shoulders are giving to the boat. Okay. You see what I mean? Yeah. So that's how a left foot forward starts his course because they're going to the right, they're left foot forward. Okay. It's kind of like a backhand versus a forehand. Right. Kind of okay. idea. And like okay. tennis. Kind of like a idea in tennis. So, for a right foot forward, say like myself, when I turn right to go to one ball, yeah. I'm facing the boat. So I'm in my onside pool. Okay. I'm just trying to picture this. Yeah. So you're going to the right. You're going to the right. That's yeah. buoy ball one. Yeah. And that's like your forehand? That would be kind of like a forehand, exactly. It's like your your strong hit. Right. Right. Strong, right. strong pool. So you get the advantage of starting out nice. Yes. No, but that's where the uh, that's where the um, the whole argument comes in, right? So six ball right. really is not considered a full turn because once you turn six, you don't cross the wakes again. You have to get out of the other set of red buoys, right? So you have an entrance gates and you have an exit gates. Well, you gotta you gotta go through gates at the end too. Exactly. Okay. So, so you don't really are they in line with each other? Yeah. yeah. So the exit gates of one pass are the entrance gates of the fall okay. pass, right? So you can see them. When you're coming down, you're like, that's where I need to get through. Well, yeah. While you're skiing, you're focusing on the buoy of the turn, but as you turn okay. six ball, you see the exit gates and you stop pulling. So it's not really a full turn. It's kind of like a half turn. And okay? that's for both feeded people? Yes. Okay. But that's the, that's the catch. F- the on-site turn is the turn that, say, for right foot forwards is 2-4. Mm-hmm. Right, so you're turning the ball and you get into an onside pool. You get into your forehand, right? Yes. For so that means that one, three, and five are offside turns. They're like your backhand. So you're exactly so you're turning and you're you're not facing. You're giving the shoulders to the boat, right? Mm-hmm. For so we have three hard turns and two good turns. Because six ball really doesn't count. That's one of the arguments. Whereas left foot forwards, they have three onside turns. Because when they turn one, three, five, they get into their onside pool. But only two hard turns, namely two and four. Two and four. So the argument is the course, the way it's set up now, it's easier for left foot forwards than for rights. And that's what Freddie really wanted to prove by saying, okay, I'm going to put the buoys on the other side. I'm going to get three onside turns now. He had to switch out the buoys? So, he, yeah. So he put buoys on the opposite side of the boat. Okay. So he created a, a, a mirror image of the current course. I got you. Right? Yeah, because across from one, there's just water. Water, exactly. Right. So he put yeah. another ball there. Okay. Across from two, he put another ball there. Okay. Yeah. What a rebel. What a, uh, Freddy's a rebel. <laughs> Freddy's a rebel. Love it. Oh, you met him. Yeah, you played a bit sure. of darts with yeah, him. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. I could see him, you know. Well, now he, maybe he's on to something. Maybe they need to start, like, just a random tournament where it's backwards. Yeah. Just one, you know. Yeah. And it would kind of be fun, you know. So there have been, like, been conversations about it. Like, people say, well, actually, let's leave both of them in, and then you choose whatever you want to oh, choose. Oh, wow. You know? Oh, give you options. So give you options. How um, do you feel about that? I don't know how I feel about that. I haven't tried the reverse course in a long time. But you have tried it? I tried it like ages ago. And it felt so weird to do a, a gate offside pool. It felt super weird. 
Because that would be you starting with your backhand. Correct. Right. Yeah. So okay. it felt weird, but hey, Freddie, you know, one of the best skiers in the world, he runs 41 off. He ran for, he posted a video last week. He ran 41 off on the reverse course. He did what? <laughs> yes, he did. He's wow. a, he's what an a animal. beast. Yeah. He's an animal. I can't say I'm surprised. No, yeah, you've you've met the guys. Yeah, intense. yeah, for sure. Yeah. So, so when you say ran forty one off, yeah, this is something that we need to clarify. Yeah, absolutely. Um, f- meters? No, it's feet. So forty one off means, and this is welcome to America. Right. It's forty one. Thank feet. you for my introduction to America. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no worries. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, welcome to water ski, like American water skiing. Let's okay. put it this way. But so, this is isn't this where it started? Uh, yeah, nineteen twenty one in Minnesota. Yeah, yeah. In Minnesota. Minnesota, love somewhere. It's else. cold as shit up there. I know, but it had to have been in the summer. Yeah, I've been in the summer. I this mean, guy, like snow skier, wanted to do the same on water and figured it out. That really, he could do it behind a boat. Yeah. That's how it started. That's how it started. Okay. All right. And spread out, spread pretty quickly across the is globe. There a, is there a cross? Like, have you snow skied? Believe it or not, I've never snow skied in my entire life. And wow. I live next to the Alps. People wow. just don't believe it. I know. Yeah. It's crazy. I snowboarded, but never okay. snow skied. Do you feel like the skills from skiing transferred and helped you with s- snowboarding? Uh, yes. Yes. Well, I tried snowboarding when I was 10 or 11, did it a a little bit during Mm -hmm. the winter time. And then I started to get pretty good in skiing. So I would travel abroad to water ski in the winter. So my snowboarding Mm -hmm. never really got any good. Like to this day, if we were to go on a slope, I'd be, I'd be snowboarding, but I wouldn't be going down fast or do any jumps or anything. Right. What if I said, no, man, let's ditch that shit. Let's, let's ski. Snow skiing. Yeah. I don't know, man. Yeah, I, I guess I could. I guess I could try it. You've never even tried. Never tried it. Wow. Like the first time I went down on a slope full of snow, <laughs> like covered by snow, right. was on a snowboard. Okay. Was on a one board. Do you remember that decision? Like, oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna just do a board instead of Yeah, skis. yeah, of course. Yeah. It was like at the time what wakeboarding was getting big and mm-hmm. a lot of People were wakeboarding and trying to convince me to wakeboard. Oh wow! I know I'm on a set path with water skiing, but when I go to to the slopes, I want to snowboard. Mm. I don't want the skis. Fuck that! I want to snowboard. What? Yeah, I know. I know it's a bit weird. Yeah, but no reason. It was just like fuck the skis. Yeah, fuck the skis. I wanted the snowboard. Yeah, and I tried. The f- I learned how to snowboard actually on the slalom snowboard. Which, if you ever seen one of those, Haven't. it has the same bindings as a snow ski, like okay. hard shell bindings, and the feet are not parallel, like they're not like ninety degrees from the slope. They're slightly tilted. Interesting. Right. So I learned on that, and then after that, switched to a. Were you already slalom skiing? Yeah, yeah, I was already slalom skiing. You weren't on just two ski. You no. were already on the one. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. We gotta go. S- we got to go snow skiing, dude. Have you ever snow skiing? Yeah. Oh, dude. Uh, pizza and French fries. What? Pizza and French fries. That's how you snow ski. French fries, your skis are parallel. Okay. That'll help you move. And then if you want to stop, you hit the pizza. Point oh those toes God. together. That so says like, a lot about your country, man. Like, you have to use <laughs> pizza and French fries to teach no people shit, how to snow seriously. ski? <laughs> and then, I mean... Get your appetite going too, right? You know? Yeah, I guess. Not yeah. only because you're like skiing, but you're also thinking about pizza and fries the whole time. So, <laughs> right, exactly, that's probably their. That's probably why they did that, right? Yeah. So going back to the off, okay. right? Yeah, we got, and and more, maybe a little more of the history, real quick. Um, 1921. Yeah, and honestly. I have a bit of a blur in terms of like 40s and 50s, but I mean, 50s is when water skiing really got exposed, you know? Yeah. Um, Tournaments were happening. Show skiing was massive. Like you would see pictures of water skiing. Show skiing? Show skiing. So like at the circus? Kind of, kind of like at the circus, (laughs) you know, they're doing, you you must have seen it before. They do pyramids. Oh yeah. You know, for sure. Barefooting in, in sort of, and barefooting is its own 
what is sports discipline in and of itself. They have tournaments and everything. They have tournaments for people that don't want to put anything on their feet? Yes, they do. And wow. they're pretty gnarly. Yeah. I'd imagine. Yeah, they're pretty gnarly. But like, you know, show skiing. Right. And then in, yeah, I mean, the golden age was probably the 80s. It, in terms of pro tour and oh, exposure wow. on TV was like 80s, early 90s. Yeah. 80s was a great decade, man. Was it? Well, it brought us both into life, so. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> That's true. The golden era. 80s. I would say, yeah, yeah, in terms of, like, exposure to the sport. I mean, I sh- I, I showed you a, a video, like, two or three days ago where, like, Bud and Course and Café de Colombia, they were all sponsoring the Pro Tour. Yeah. You know, like, water skiers were, were making a good living. Well, that, that shit was on ESPN. It was on ESPN. It's Every pretty... Monday night, prime time. Oh, wow. Yeah. And what, during the summer? During the summer, primarily, yeah. Yeah. So not competing with Monday Night Football. Exactly. Like, that was the Monday Night Showcase. Yeah, you see, like, uh, your Cowboys were safe in terms <laughs> of right. competition on, right. on TV time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. America's team, by yeah. the way. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, so 80s, 90s, it really peaked. Do you know what kind of caused that peak? Or yeah, you- yeah. So basically, um, Mastercraft boats really started to push through to get um were they are these these boats with engines yeah like before they were like rowing no 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 like the the brand oh my god the <laughs> brand itself started to seek out external sponsorship to create a tour that was under their umbrella so this boat company is yeah. like you want you want to make this big we should get some sponsors for our boats well the tour was the mastercraft pro tour right what's the tour tour it would be like a like a tennis tour or a golf tour like like a tournament it's a series of tournaments okay right with okay. its own point system and you know, okay yeah and that's the professional tournament or Correct. that was a separate one no it was the professional tour okay yes and that was called the mastercraft pro tour yeah okay um but enough with the history i think like this is pretty interesting it is right. it we is. can come back to it we can come back to it we can shelf time. it you we know can shelf i think it. now you, uh, the reason why we wanted to do this was to explain to non-skiers what skiing terminology rules. For sure, that, you know. For sure. So we left off with the forty-one off. Correct. Okay. Yeah. So in the U.S., you use rather than saying how long the rope is in feet, which would make a lot of sense, they say how many feet the rope is off a 75 foot line okay i know it's confusing so there's a 75 foot line that's the standard line and that's what you'd start on if you're a rookie pretty much yes you start on 75 feet correct and that means you're 75 feet behind the boat correct and you're skiing around buoys yeah that are how far out so they are 11 and a half meters from the boat. Okay, okay. I'll put it, you know, ask Siri how many feet is 11 and a half meters. How many feet is 11 and a half meters? The answer is 37.73 feet. 37.73. Thank you, British Siri. Yeah, I was going to say you still have that. Eh? <laughs> oh, for sure. Okay, so 41 off. So wait, you're going to be double the distance? Like, effort. you're going to be way out there. Are well, the lakes even big enough to That's hold long you? line skiing, yes, but... Technically, the first real tournament skiing line is 15 off. So it's a 60-foot long line. So you still have 23 feet of wiggle room. Yeah, which you're making it sound like it's super easy. It sounds like, I mean, yeah. remember, I've never done this. That's yeah, true. Right? That's true. Remember, I'm a novice. <laughs> yeah, I've yeah. never even, you know, I've, yeah, so, ki- I've kicked one off. You know, that's my claim to fame. Yeah, so, I know. I know. I know. Um, So it seems like... I mean, tricky enough that you're on one ski. That sounds hard enough. That's but right. but if you have that much room and you're just like, and don't you start off slower speeds? Yeah, you do. You do. So it's like, I mean, sixty off, and you have twenty three feet, and you're it's not sixty off. Sixty off would be you'll be seating the boat. Sixty feet. <laughs> sixty feet of line. Yeah. Six, sixty feet of line. Fifteen yeah. off. Yeah. Okay. Fifteen off. Exactly. Fifteen off, and that's where you'd start at a tournament. 
So you start, yeah. So like if, you know, let's say we were to ski together a little bit and then you wanted to a take lot. a poke at the course. Yeah, it'd be a lot, but I wouldn't just do a little bit. <laughs> no, I know, I know. You you don't do half bad. Right, but like, right. <laughs> let's say we were to ski a little bit, like we would go at 15 off and then probably at a slower speed at first so that you learn how to ski the course. Could we just get a reference point for speed that I would start at? Yeah, probably someone like you with your weight. I would say probably you started like 24, 26 miles per hour. Okay. Right. Why does my weight matter? Is that like... Well, say for about, instance... Yeah, no, no, no. I'm not... Is I'm that not, like a short... No, Another short no, joke? No. no, I'm just saying like say a kid that weighs like... Now eight. you're comparing me to a child? No, I'm just saying like <laughs> if you had a kid that was like 90 pounds or 100 pounds, you would put them at like... 16 miles per hour slower 80, slower yeah because they can float right me and you at 18 miles per hour we either use a super long ski or we sink oh really pretty much okay so you have a to long use... ski would help you from sinking. yeah it's more surface area right right well so but is, then is it harder to navigate the course because it's a longer ski yeah i mean you can only go so long with the ski right otherwise you know right. you're not turning essentially like you're getting on the other side well, but right. then you wouldn't be able to turn the buoy. Couldn't cut. Couldn't not couldn't turn. And consequently not being able to cut. Okay. Right. I so, didn't I didn't realize there was a difference. Well, cut is when you cross the wakes. So the ski's oh. on one edge and you're going somewhere. Okay. Right. Turning is where you go from first you go from one edge to the inside edge, like in the, your snow skis, and then you turn. You actually create a turn around the buoy or free skiing if you see buoys. when i back to the shock and all right like it looked like you're just cutting like you're just cutting on a dime like whoop you know right straight across and then and you're then just, you turn right but you cut then you turn no you turn then you cut is what you were saying yeah i mean eventually it becomes <laughs> a, a sequence of cutting and turning right so when you get to one ball yeah you're turning and then you cut correct the and the cut process is when you cross the wake. Yep. Okay. See, I thought you were cutting right, like because it seems like you cut across. Like as soon as you hit that ball, you're like, yeah, no, yeah, ninety yeah, I see degree what you angle. Mean. You yeah, know? yeah, I see what you mean. No, well, not even the the. Uh, so you're cutting, and then you go from. Say you're going through the gates, so you're on the right edge of the ski, right? You're cutting water, and All you're right. going to the right. Right. And then you want to start preparing the turn into one ball so you get off the right edge you get on the flat of the ski and then slowly into the inside edge which will be the left and as the ski gets into the inside edge it starts wanting to go to the left right mm. and so that's when the turn is initiated nice yeah and then at that point you've gotten one ball yep you, so you've got because can't you get like half balls and three yeah, quarter balls no and... you can get a half or a quarter you can't get three quarter balls. There's no three quarter balls. No, oh, okay. it's either quarter ball or half ball. Okay, or a full balls. Or a full ball. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. All right. So yeah. So in order to get a full buoy, you have to turn and cross the wakes. Okay. Now. So you got to make it halfway to two. You have to make it a little bit over halfway to two. Over halfway. Yeah. So if you fall inside the wakes. Yeah. So you lose the handle, say, that would be half. Okay. Right? But if you cross the wakes and then you lose the handle, that would be one. Okay. Right. Okay, you got to make it successfully across the wake. Yeah, you have to... And we're talking about the wake that the boat creates. Correct. Yeah, right. the wakes that the boat creates. Is that ever an uh, issue? The, the wake? Wakes? Well, yeah, I mean... Because when I was, you know, skiing... Like the wakes, like oh shit, you gotta prepare for that. Yeah, you know of what I mean? You gotta because there's a little bit of a wave. Yeah, there is. Yeah, there you is. gotta go up and over a little bit. Yeah, yeah. So they are, um, they are one. Actually, that's one of the early struggles of beginning water skiers, right? So cutting or crossing the wakes, which becomes a synonymous, it's it tends to if your position is not good, it tends to you know make the ski wobble or jump a little bit, yeah. and that's where people start to freak out, pull the line. And you probably remember what happens when you pull the line when you were learning how to ski. The skis go forward and you fall. Right? Fall on your ass. I'll fall on your ass. Yeah. <laughs> yeah or yeah. forward, but uh, generally on your ass. Yeah, right. Um, and so 
We got to talk about falling at some point. As well. Yeah, we'll talk about yeah, falling. No worries. Important. Um, I kind of lost my train of thought here. We're talking about cutting. Right. Cutting and turning. Yeah. And this all stemmed from the length of the lines. Yeah. We, we are going all sorts of way with this length of the line. For sure. So let's talk metric for a second. Yeah. Just I think it's going to be easier for you to understand. Okay. 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 So the boat goes straight mm -hmm. in the middle of the course. Right. The pylon is where the rope is attached in the boat. The pilot? Pylon. 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 Yeah. P-Y-L-O-N. Oh, the pylon. Pylon. Yes. The pylon. Pylon. All right. Yep. So <laughs> the distance between the pylon <laughs> and the buoy is 11 and a half meters. Okay. Right. Which we said was 37 feet. Correct. But okay. 11 and a half meters. 11 and a half meters. For each one. It doesn't each get ball. like shorter as you go. It's all from, from the US to China, Europe, everywhere in the world. No, I mean course, from one ball to six ball. Yeah, yeah it's all all every, the same. Every yep. ball is always 11 and a half. Correct. Okay. Correct. And the rope. The longest that, that you use, which is the 15 off, is 18 and a quarter meters. Okay. That's nice, even number. Go on. 18 and a quarter. <laughs> then you go to 16. Oh, okay. That's even. Yeah. I like Then you I go like to 14 there. and a quarter. Okay. I'm sensing a pattern. <laughs> 13 <laughs> meters. Okay. 12 meters. 11 and a quarter meters. So 11 and a quarter is the first rope length where you're a quarter a meter short compared to the ball like you got to be stretch armstrong you're going to be stretch armstrong and you got to be like having the speed and the skill to keep the ski outside while not falling right sure yeah to make that turn turn exactly so that you can make the cut across the wake and look at me turn, look at me yeah. next turn. yes see this is that the hype i told you it's gonna be getting high there you go there you go learning is fun <laughs> Good. I'm, glad, I'm glad we're yeah. I don't know what anyone is going to learn out of this but you know at least you're learning right and we're recording that's right you know that's so right. yeah. um so yeah 11 and a quarter then 10 75 so 10 and three quarter meters so now you are so that wasn't a small that was a smaller change that was a yeah because you're getting to the limit right right then from 10 and a, 10 and three quarters to 10 and a quarter 10.25 meters that's the 41 off Right, forty-one off is ten and a quarter. Ten and a quarter meters. Okay. And then nine point seven five meters. Now you are a meter and seventy-five shorter than the distance between the pylon and the buoy. Whew. Right. So. Damn. The world record currently it's two and a half buoys at nine seventy-five. Two and a half buoys. So didn't make it across the wake but correct but got the ski out got, and actually got a, a half a turn into it and then fell wait got a half a turn into it so he, the ski was outside three ball okay. the ski started turning because they already got one ball and two ball yeah yeah they got so one they were back over to three back over to three ski was outside of the buoy yeah started the turn but then couldn't go across the wakes mm. so it was two and a half yeah okay Wow. And just to give you an, an understanding of how exponentially harder it gets, yes. and that's why the the differences in lines are that small when you get that shorter. Right. You know, I would have to pull out the numbers, but maybe there's like 150 to 200 people in the world that can run 38, um, 11 and a quarter, like right now, 2019. That okay, not can in the history of the sport, no, no. but right now, currently, that currently, can go out and 2019, do it. there's probably around nearing 200 people in the world that can successfully run wow a um 11 That's and a quarter. very select group of people right yeah 10 7 and 5 and let's just to appease the american in me yeah that's 38 off that's 38 off yes okay. um 36 miles per hour for men 34 for women so, what what how so 36 boat, miles an hour the boat goes at 36 miles per hour for men and 34 for women. That's the max speed, right? Wow. Once you run the course at 18 and a quarter or 15 off, yeah. at your max speed, which would be 36 for us, 34 for a woman, okay. then you can start going to the 16 meters, to the four, you know. So you got to work your way up. You got to work your way when up. When you're starting. You got to work your way up. Before right? you can even start cutting any line. Yeah, and that's a big moment in a skier's career when they get to shorten the line for the first time. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's a big, big moment. So, so yeah, 
back again. 200 people in the world currently run 38 off, 2019, say. Yeah. Uh, 39 and a half off, or 10.75 meters. I would say there's about 35 guys in the world and about four women. Whoa. Okay. Wow. 10.25, or 41 off, 11 people in the history of the sport ran it. So you see how exponentially harder it becomes. Well, I mean, 11 people in the world. In the history. In not, the history. Not, not in but 2019. you've done 41. I haven't run it. Now, we're talking about getting successfully six buoys, not just oh, a few buoys. Okay. When I say run the pass, means you got the six buoys with the oh, gates. Oh, see, this is that um, that terminology yeah, again. Yeah, r- exactly. So, so running the course doesn't mean like uh, you gave it a good college try. <laughs> no, no, no. And you, you got a couple. You ran that shit. No, 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 no like no. you got to run that shit. Like yeah. you got to go all the way through it. You got to get through the gate too. Got to get through the gates. Both of them. You got to do what well, one at first, then do the six right. buoys, and then get through the other one. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Eleven. Eleven in the history of the sport. And I imagine, based off the conversations we have had in the past, that it's people recent. Well somewhat yes so the first one that was ever run was by jeff rogers in 1997 this is a this is um appealing to the history part of the yeah. sport that exactly. I we're going to back to that yeah, yeah yes yeah. We'll, we'll edit it out we'll, we'll do a little <laughs> work so jeff rogers first no, this got to be raw and uncut bro this shit's well, gotta be raw. <laughs> well i mean that's how i do my podcast and i just hit record a yeah, little uh, clean up and uh, then oh yeah oh yeah so yeah jeff rogers first one in 97 Latest one to run it, I believe, is uh, Robert Pigozzi last year. Oh, wow. So that was the 11th, yeah. Wow. Um, Did the uh, homie Freddy, has he done it? Homie Freddy has done it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He has done it this year, actually, a few times, yeah. A few times? Not the first time, but he's he's run 41 now, after times. you do something like that, do you flex? Like, did he flex for, like for the crowd? I hope Freddie flexed. Well, Freddie fist pumps. Okay, fist pumps. Freddie fist pump. Yeah, he, he did fist pump. Yeah. I like that. I mean, it's, it's a big achievement, you know. Well, I'd say that's why yeah. I thought it deserved a flex. Yeah, I know. It's a bit <laughs> different in skiing. Yeah, but um, but uh, yeah, so eleven people that run in the history of the sport. Wow, you know, so like that shows you how much harder. And then if forty three off or nine seven five, the vast majority of people did one. Some people they ran got, it once. No, they got one ball and couldn't get to two. Oh, wow. So that's how, to the limit of human, yeah. you know. Well, I'd assume, like, if you're a couple meters short, then you got to be a couple meters tall. Yeah. yeah. Right? In height helps. I height. would imagine. Height helps. And, like, long arms? Yeah, reach. Reach. So, like, reach. do you have any practice where you, like, put your arms in, like, a machine and you, like, run away from it to see if it'll <laughs> no. stretch out? No, that's water skiing. That's what you do through water skiing. You oh, okay. get your arms like super long. Nice. Yeah, <laughs> you know? Just from the sheer practice. Just from the sheer practice. Okay. Exactly. All right. No machines. No machines. Because like, I've considered that for making myself taller. Yeah. You know, a little stretch machine. Why, did you, or... why didn't you do that? It seemed freaky, man. Yeah, I don't exactly. Know. <laughs> so what the hell? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, yeah. I didn't need it for like a sport, you know, track, uh, just, oh, track just for, football. for giggles, yeah. Yeah, I was just thinking it'd be cool to be a little taller, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe like hang upside down or something. But right. I don't know. Um, so, yeah. So, yeah, that's that's how tough the, the sport is. So, we're talking 41 off because, I mean, that's what a lot of people – I mean, there's a lake here. In Tallahassee, it's called Lake Thirty Eight. So I mean, if we keep talking meters, people might get confused. Yeah, we got to kind of go back and forth with feet. Yeah, because this is the you know metric, and then you know America is just not with it. I know. This is me right now campaigning for America to go metric. Good. You know, let's get it out there. Let's start a hashtag: America Go Metric. Nice. Uh, You know, I mean, I think I think a lot of people will get behind it. Let's do it. I think there's. Maybe bigger problems to deal with, but also there certainly, <laughs> certainly are. But uh, this is the one I'm on right now. The one you're passionate yeah. about. Yeah. Maybe next podcast we'll get on to something else. But right now, America Go Metric. Okay. Hashtag it. Okay. And uh, I'm because I'm still a few years away from being old enough to run for president. So we'll start small. What? You got to be an age. Thirty-five. Thirty-five. Yeah. I didn't know. I that. believe John F. K. John F. Kennedy. 
JFK. There JFK. Go. Was the youngest president, I uh-huh. believe. Okay. Yeah. Bit so, just, sidetracked. Sidetracked, but yeah. I mean, it's good to know. Well, speaking of 35, um, at 36 years of age in water skiing. Wow, this is excellent. I like this. Go on. Um, actually, impressive. For it's men, yeah. the boat doesn't go at 36 miles per hour anymore, it goes at 34. So, okay. What? At 36 years old? Yeah, so when you so, hit 36, you can choose to ski what we call senior men. But then you're not a pro anymore. No. And what's that mean in the water ski world? See, that's interesting because, like, some people uh, criticize that. They say, well, you're 36, you're still competitive in the pro tour or, like, a world championships or stuff that's like that. That's not old in the water ski world? What is it? That's not old in the water ski world? No. Like thirty six for an NBA player is like, oh man, you're getting up there. Unless you're like LeBron. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I would say you're Or I mean, f- like football, there's no thirty six year old players except for like quarterbacks and kickers. You know? Yeah. No, in water skiing, you're yeah, you're on the older side, but you're not like old. Still you know? competitive. Yeah, you can still be I mean, super competitive. Yeah. The guy that finished uh second in the pro tour this year is uh, thirty eight. 37. He finished second? Yeah. In the pro t- tour? In the whole tour of the season. Which means that he beats, like, how does that work? How, how do you? Okay, so the what we call currently the pro tour, which is not really a tour in itself, but it's, um, it's a collection of tournaments that give out a cash prize purse, right? Mm-hmm. And according to the, there's a, there's a point system uh, that the International Water Ski Federation created that is correlated to the money, right? So the more money you give out in that tournament, the more points you give out, okay? okay? And then it becomes a question of collecting points. So, you know, say that I go to a tournament that has a total purse for men of 12 grand and I win, I get 240 points. Okay. If it was a tournament with more money, I would get more points. Is it always... Like e- like if it's twelve grand, it's double the like because it seemed like that was yeah yeah. Is that just like, by chance? No, no, it's not by chance. Okay. Yeah, no, there's a formula that, okay. that you okay. know puts it together. But um, so yeah, you collect points, and whoever has the most points finishes at the end of the tour. And so I'd imagine, not to cut you off, but yeah. I would imagine that the more that you ski, the more beneficial that's going to be for you your placement. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Although uh, the way it works is that I think it's half the tournaments. So like this year, for instance, there were 12 pro tour, pro tournaments in men's slalom. 12, all year long. 12. And okay. they take your top six placement points. Okay. Right? And that's your ranking. Because like you're getting your doctorate. Yeah. You can't go to all 12. No. That's just not feasible. No. So somebody that could do 12, they're not going to have an advantage because of the fact that they've done, you know, six more, eight more tournaments than you. No, no, mathematically, no. Right. Like, because they mean, just take the top. Six if I anyway. do six and you do nine, right, we're still counting on six tournaments. Okay. Now, That's... of course, you doing nine, you get a better chance of placing higher right. and then improving your six. Right. Sure. Sure. Um, but it's not like all nine of mine are counted against no. your six. No, no, it's okay. the. I think it's half of however many they have. Okay. So I think, yeah, I think that's how it works. So if we had 10, it would be five, you know. Right. Oh, so it's not the same number every year, the that tournaments. De- no, it depends on the number of tournaments. Oh, they're not set, like, because I've, I've heard you talking of, like, the Masters. Yeah. That's a pro tournament. That's the, like, the our Wimbledon, essentially, like the okay. most important pro tournament. Okay. Yeah. You could have went with, like, the Super Bowl. You could have went with the World Series. No, uh, yeah. could have went with the NBA finals i'd rather go with an individual sport you know it's an individual sport was preferred fair to enough. Give, you know fair enough okay yeah <laughs> but uh just, just point out that was an interesting joint wimbledon all okay right. all right yeah well i mean <laughs> we have the masters the mumba masters in australia these tournaments have been going on for decades so those you can count on they're yeah, going to be part of the 10 or there. 12 yeah they're going to be there and then it's just a matter of whoever what? pulls out the other one you know like is whoever. there a limit not that I'm aware of, mm. no. Okay. But um, but yeah, the other big one that's been happening for a few years now is the Malibu Open. 
the one that I went to ski in Charleston a yes, few weeks ago. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and then it's other tournaments like you know that I've been organizing one for six years, and there's been other efforts in Europe and here in the U.S. Keith does one here, you know, right? Lake Thirty Eight, right? So if you want to do one, I mean, you just need to have the obviously the lake and yeah. the resources, correct? Okay, but and so yours has been a staple for the last six years, yeah. Better part of the last decade as a pro tournament. That, yep, yeah, that's cool. No, I'm I'm very proud of it. I imagine know? that's awesome. Like I started because, at the time, there was no pro tournaments in Europe. Say what? Yeah, there weren't there weren't any for a few years. Like, in the 2000s, there were some. Yeah. And then 2010, 2011, there was nothing. What? Oh, that's interesting. I would have thought there would have at least been one. Well, no, they, they've been they have been up until then. Right. And then there weren't any. Right. And then in 2014. We organized one, a small one, mm-hmm. um, and the hope was to grow, like you know, to make it grow to become a full-fledged pro tournament with 12, 21 grand, and in the hopes that someone will get inspired in Europe and say, "Hey, these guys did it. Hopefully, we can do it too." Mm-hmm. You know, and it, cool. it pushes the sport forward. Right. And last year, sorry, this year, we had six pro tournaments for men's slalom uh, in five weeks. Say what? Over there. See. There were across the pond, across the pond in Europe. There were two in France, wow. back to back. There was one in Spain, then there was ours. That's what's up, man. And then there was one in France during the week, and then there was one in um, near London that weekend. That's impressive. It, it is. It's pretty cool. Very. Yeah. So, is that feasible to like ski all of those? Well, uh, it, it was challenging. I didn't ski all of them because yeah. obviously having to organize one. I right. was, you know, you had shit going on, shit going on, yeah. yeah. But um, but no, some skiers skied all six. Wow! And and, and how many weeks you said five? Five, five weeks. Yeah. Six tournaments. Pro, six tournaments. Yeah. That doesn't take a toll on the body. Oh, it does. It does. Like, would you ski as well at your six as you would your first, second, third, or are you pretty much like well, dragging ass, beat up? Yeah, you are. But I mean, you sort of have to figure out a way to do it, right? So you you train a little less during the week you you do very selected practice sets and really make sure that you're periodizing yourself to where you get to the week and you have the energy to do it right well i mean i imagine that it takes a toll not just on your energy but like doesn't it physically i mean i've seen people fall yeah you've seen some falls <laughs> i've seen some falls and i imagine that those weren't like the most wicked falls they seemed like standard falls which by my estimation was like oh shit because y'all are moving fast yeah 36 miles an hour yeah that's not slow no it's not slow. i mean but sometimes like when you get around to the middle you're going a little slower no you're going faster so the the boat has its own speed right right it's always going 36 36 they never hit the brakes no it's got it's got a computer with gps that keeps it at 36 whilst you're you know pulling behind it right okay but your own speed, right? Say you're going through the gates mm-hmm. and you're behind the boat, but you're really going right. Right. Your own speed, like your speed going to the right, is way faster than 36. It's like 60, 65. Now, that's what it looks like. Yeah, and that's I'm what like, it is. Shit. Exactly. Y'all are flying. Then at the ball, you slow down a lot. Right. That's where you said, like, sometimes you get slack. Exactly. And then you might just sink. Yeah, into the fall. water, right? Yeah. Or fall? Well, yeah, you might fall. Well, yeah. I've, I thought I've seen people just like sink. <laughs> yeah, that, <laughs> like, isn't that depressing? Yeah, yeah, it's like, oh shit. Yeah, no, no. It's just like they're in quicksand or something. Yeah, exactly. That's when you're turning, you lose the handle, and you just like gently <laughs> <laughs> sink. It's like, and, bye. Yeah. yeah that's, where your, that's where your emotions also go with you. <laughs> yeah, you <know>? I'm sure. <laughs> um, but you're going slower then. Yeah, yeah. So your own speed right. goes higher behind the boat. And slower than at the ball, higher behind the boat. So you get a lot of G forces into the, this whole thing, you know. Yeah. And that's why you you're have pulling to, a lot of G's. You're pulling a lot of G's. Yeah. So that's why you have to be like really good. You have good position, good technique to be able to absorb all that force, you know. Right. Wow. Yeah. Is it better to go faster? Like the person that slows down when they turn 36 are like, yeah, this boat's too fast for me now. I'm 36. I'm old. 
It's time to go slower. I'm going to oh. go 34. Oh, yeah. Does that yeah. make it easier? Yes, for sure. It makes it easier. Well, think about it. Like the buoys are at, a, at the same distance between the boat, but they're also the, the same distance amongst themselves, right? Right. So the slower you go, the more time you have to get to the other side. Okay. Right? That so makes that's sense. why going slower is easier. Oh, okay. Right? Yeah. Because I was thinking, like, give me a few more miles per hour so I can get through this thing a little faster. Maybe I'll just whip through it, and then I'll be no. done. No, it's not like that. So you wouldn't want to be like, yo, man, give me 37 for no. this one. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No? That, that doesn't help. No, not <laughs> yeah. at all. That's, now give me 35 That's and going half, the wrong you know? way. <laughs> exactly. Going the wrong way. Okay. Slow down a little bit. Yeah. Do you think you'd be able to tell if the boat was, like, 37? For damn sure. Really? One mile an hour? You'd be able to tell. I would tell like, like, this shit's going way too fast. I would tell you like 0.2 miles per hour. Say what? Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, for real. How many tens of thousands of turns have I done in my life, you know? So so I would be able to tell, you know? Yeah. It's like for you, you've been, you know, lifting weights for a lot of years. Right. If I put like, you know, even just like a two and a half or a five, you're going to feel it. I'd feel it, but I'd still do it. No, of course you still do it. But you'll feel it. I won't. Right. You know, right. but you will. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So. Wow. Yeah. Do women go in 50 minutes? Really? I, I think. Yeah. This is good. Yeah. We should make it like a, like a consistent thing. I'm down. Yeah. Because I have a, a bunch of things to ask. And, oh, know, how many do you go through? Like, check your list. I've, I've, I remember asking one question. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. I've asked one out of all the questions. I have my my first question was can you ski with one leg? Yes. Tell me more. Meaning cuz it's a slalom, you yeah. know, so I'm thinking it's one ski. Mm-hmm. Could you use one leg if you wanted to? Yeah, you could. You'd be making it way harder for yourself, right? Really you tried it? Yeah, actually I my coach used to make me do it as um as a drill. Interesting. Yeah. Well, obviously, much slower speed. Um, so, like, 35? No, no, like, 22, <laughs> 24. Okay, you know? okay. Um, and you're, so your right foot back. Left foot forward. Your left foot forward. No, I'm right foot forward. Your right foot forward, left yeah. foot back. Correct. You're left-footed. But we did, I don't know if I'm left-footed, but we, we talk, it, in water skiing, we talk about what the the foot that is front, like, the front foot. Okay. So Have I'm you ever done forward. track? Yes. You ever came out of the blocks? Yes. What foot was forward? Forward was right. Oh, interesting. Okay, because I was I'm left foot forward out of the blocks. Okay, I explode and, off my left foot and, and when drive you your, hard with my right. Well, when you had that momento, momental moment in your skin where you kicked off, which ski did you kick off? I kicked off my right. Yeah. Yeah. So you're left foot forward. Yeah, but then I crashed. Well, I mean, okay, but you know, I mean. Pretty soon, <laughs> like it was short lived. I, I mean, I, you say momentous, but it, I remember smacking. <laughs> the, oh yeah, you know. So you never got a chance to actually ride one ski. I rode it. Yeah, yeah, for a few seconds. Okay. Yeah, I never crossed the wake. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. You know, I was just. I might have smiled. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> At the time like, to smile, like, it was like smacking. shit. Yeah. <laughs> right. Like, yeah. How long ago was that? That was twenty years ago. Oh, wow. I mean, yeah, I was probably 11. We need to get you back, man. I want to. I want to. But, I mean, your process with starting a new skier, is it generally the same as how other people do? Or, I mean, if, like, you know, I'm new. Let's say somebody else that's listening to this is new. Yeah. Never skied before. Is it? And they went to, they heard this, they were inspired. They're like, I'm going to go try this shit. Yeah. They go to a lake. Would they start them the same way that you would start me? Is it generally the same kind of welcoming? Yeah, I would say the traditional way you put someone on two skis, okay. right? And you teach them how to get out of the water. Like that's one that's of the a challenging things, thing. Yeah, that's itself. one of the things that it's very particular about water skiing like or right. wakeboarding. Like you're in the water, you right. got to get on top of exactly. it. Exactly. Right? Yeah, it's challenging. the boat toes you. I've tried yeah. it so many times with one ski and it's just so swirly, squirrely. Yeah. Like, yeah. I can get up with two, no problem. Right. But... One, it's just like... So, yeah, you go, you start with two. Right. Then you, you know, hopefully you start crossing the wakes a little bit. You know, you, you feel your way behind the boat. You learn how to feel the rope that is pulling you, you know. Mm-hmm. And then eventually you do some prep exercises to see which foot you might be forward. 
Now, some people try water skiing and they are, you know, they've already skateboarded a lot, snowboarded a lot, like right. a lot of board sports where they had a foot in front and a foot back. Mm -hmm. And although that's not 100%, but 90 plus percent of the times, that's going to translate into what foot you have in front for water skiing, right? Okay. Because when I snowboard, my left foot's back. Hmm. Okay. Maybe that explains why I fell so fast when I kicked off my skis. Possibly. Maybe your right foot forward. Well, I didn't know that you didn't actually get to ski with one ski. So we're going to have to retest, you know? Yeah. And it's been so long. I mean. I know. I know. Yeah. Two decades. Two decades. That's a lot. That's a long time. It's a long time. Yeah. After that, I was like, fuck this. I'm just doing two. Because <laughs> I didn't go to the lake that much. Right. So if I went, I wanted to have fun. And yeah. like skiing on two, crossing wakes, trying to, you know. Hurt yeah, myself. Fun. It was a good fun. time. Yeah. Yeah. So no, I guess that there's a standard way to do it. Mm -hmm. Now, what I really find super exciting is that um, HO Skis came out with this big ski. I, I'm talking like it almost as wide as a wakeboard. It's called the Overcraft. <laughs> and we launched it last year, and it's so damn easy to get out of the water with this thing. It's unbelievable. Is it a slalom? It Yeah, you have your feet. One behind the other, like in a, on a slalom ski, but yeah. it's as like I've never seen anything this wide. That's and we, brilliant. And it's brilliant. Like you can literally get anyone out of the water with that. Thing. Nice. And that makes a difference, right? Because well, yeah. What about you? You said, yeah, I tried a few times. Yeah. Fuck that shit. I'm You're gonna right. go with two skis because I can get out of the water. Exactly. So I think that ski is gonna it, it's gonna break through something. You know, like yeah. ski school. Any ski school should have one. Do you, Do you have one? Yeah, we have a couple at the ski. At school. Lake Thirty Eight. Not at Lake Thirty Eight. Well, because I'm, I mean, I want to come out to Jolly. Yeah. But I mean, it's not gonna be anytime soon. I, Lake Thirty Eight would be much. Yeah. Quicker. We'll we'll get you out with one ski, man. Don't worry. Uh, well, even actually, without the say, over one, the actually, overboard. Yeah, without the overboard, you know. You're confident. I'm confident that you'll do it. I mean, you're mm -hmm. athletic. You're, Thank you're strong. You. you know. Yeah. Well, so strength matters because that excites me. My yeah. eyebrows went up when you said that. Yeah. Well, it matters because. You know, like the at first you don't have the technique, so sometimes you can compensate a little bit with strength. But then the better you become, the less you need strength. Oh right? wow! Yeah, that's the idea. It's like, is there a point to where strength is like, no, this ain't good? I think so. You try to over. I think I think in in slalom, like you don't have, to have strength, you have to wait a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Roughly speaking, right? Um, and yeah. Probably that's not the best. And I'd imagine you're more dense, so you'd sink. Or does that not matter? Because you're, you're on top of the water. You're going 36 miles an hour, and you're flying through. You're barely even touching the water anyway. Yeah, but obviously, as you're slowing down, the heavier you are, provided all things equal, the heavier you are, the quicker you slow down. Mm. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah, but then it's not, that's not necessarily good. Right. You know? Yeah, you so wouldn't want to. You don't want to slow down too quickly. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, no, dude, I say the next episode is going to be after you've tried to ski again, you know. Okay. And we'll get you back I, on the podcast. I like podcast. how you're, you're putting this on, like, now it's cemented. Like, it's a plan now. Yeah, well, it should. It should. I mean, there's a, there's a, a few hundred listeners that are going to expect to hear right, that's how you're saying. set. No right. pressure. You know? No pressure. Right. You know. Well, then I'm going to get up, damn it. <laughs> no, you, Do you, um, some people I've seen like teaching wakeboarding and um, like up in Ohio, they yeah. had the uh, they had a little stick, like a little like a boom bar, yeah, on the side of the boat. Yeah, Do yeah. You, or, Do you like those? Do you believe in those? Or? <sighs> we have that at our ski school at home. Yeah. Uh, we use them. We're talking I mean, Jolly, right? Jolly, yeah. yeah let's, Central Valley. At least let's say the name. I mean, yeah, let's yeah, put Jolly it out ski there. School, yeah. Why not? You know? Yeah, you know, it's good to say. Yeah, Jolly Ski School. Beautiful. Um, so we have them. It gets people out easy, but right. I don't think that's what it seemed like. I but mean, I don't think it teaches you how to get out of the water properly. At the end of the day, you gotta learn how to have the rope and not pull. You know, like you're holding your hands to the side. Do you see? I always try to take it. I I remember when I was trying with one ski, I would try to take it straight no, on. No, you have to take it straight. I don't know. I just we're sitting at a table with a chair. Man. Okay, I just didn't know. Like, I'm, no, no, straight, I'm straight. Trying to learn. Straight. Okay, you do you come because I would just take in. F like heaps of water <laughs> you know no, dude we'll get you out we'll get okay. you out and then i thought maybe that's what i was doing wrong maybe i need to come up at an angle no 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 you come out straight okay straight yeah i'm starting to have some flashbacks coop 
taking in straight water. What did you learn? Do you know? Do you what? What did you learn after an hour together talking about skiing? I I don't think. Have you learned anything about the sport? I've learned a lot. Okay, we've clarified a lot of, with like the the big thing was really trying to get down the distances. Yeah, because I hear all this about thirty eight off and forty one off, twenty two off for sure. Right, and I'm still interested more about the scoring, the professional side of it. Okay. Um. But I mean, that was good insight into. I didn't know. I thought there was a set number of tournaments every year. Well, they they tend to change. You know, that's right. why our tour is not that. Uh, the professional side of our sport is not as solid as it should be. Mm. You know. But it was at one point. It was at one point. Yeah. Yeah. And we're trying. I think things are on the upside in the last two years, but that's hopefully we can continue to. to what do, do you think? What do you attribute that to? I don't know. I, I think it's a long conversation, but a number of factors you know like uh people like myself kind of taking the bed and trying to organize these yeah um i think more people that used to wakeboard or used to think that wakeboard was where he's at Mm -hmm. um particularly people like over 40 you know that you know when you fall you're in wakeboarding you risk a few injuries Um, because both why well, well, wakeboarding, you've seen wakeboarding, I was right? about to say, because both feet are on the same board, but the same is true with slalom. Yeah, but they, you don't release from the board in wakeboarding. In water skiing, you release off your ski when you fall. Oh, so you got okay. that, and also they're going way higher, right? They're jumping off a wake. Like, the boat is completely different, and it creates a big wake for mm-hmm. them to launch in the air and do oh, their spins. Gotcha. Uh, in water skiing, we're the opposite. We want as little wake as possible. Mm-hmm. So part of that is like there's more people going back to water skiing. Not the numbers are not nearly as high as wakeboarding, but you know, I think th- there's a lot of reason why things are on the on the upside, and I just want to see them continuing that way. No doubt, and I think that maybe distant future podcast. I, I'm interested. You said it's a long conversation, so yeah, no, no, we'll, we'll, do it. we'll have it. We'll have we'll that talk because yeah. I'm I'm curious about the history. And that's obviously part of the history, recent history, but it's still yep. part of that history of the sport. Yeah, no, we'll um, talk about it for yeah. sure. Well, what do you think? I think that, um, I mean, before we wrap up, I just wanted to do, are you ready to wrap up? No, no, I'm just checking in with okay, you. Okay, because I do have something I wanted to do before. Okay. Let's do it. Um, just quick word association. Uh, that's the psychologist in you, okay. So I say a word, yeah. and you give me... I mean, sounds good. It, I'm the host, so I could pick, but you're the founder, so you can either give me a couple words or one word. Got it. Up to you. I'll try my best. All right, first word. We'll start off with a softball. Ski. Fun. Oh, that's that's awesome. That's the first thing that comes to mind. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's that's uh why I'm still in it, you know. Yeah. If it wasn't fun, I don't think that I would be in it after all these years. Do you feel like most people feel that way? Most of the... Because you're a professional, yeah. right? Do you feel like most professionals feel that way? Or do you think some people are in it because of other reasons? No, for sure. A lot of people are... I mean, a good number of people are in it for other reasons. I'm not here to judge them. Right. But, no, know. no, not at all. Um I was just curious if you felt like that was kind of a consistency through the sport. I mean, I know? think the sport is really fun, and that's what yeah. a lot of people that get up that approach it at first like say it right away. You know, like you're going fast yeah. on top of water. Right. You're generally in a body of water, which means you're outside. You know, you're outdoors. That's true. You get the nature. You know, you maybe catch a tan. You know, you catch a tan. You know, can you go shirtless? By the way, could I when I when I ski? No, you have to have a life jacket for safety. So we're gonna have. I mean, in the tournaments you do, but, but also, like Keith is not gonna let you ski without. I'm sorry, jacket. it's October. No, it's now November, yeah. so I'm not gonna get much of a tan anywhere. So I <laughs> exactly. will I will conform, and I'll wear a life jacket. Sounds good. Um, until you mm, know, always, <laughs> <laughs> until always, man. Really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's... So, I mean, what if I'm just out there skiing? Not trying to ski the course, not trying to go 36 miles an hour. Because oh, no. I'm not going to do that anyway. Life jacket anyway. Really? Life, safety, man. Safety over tan. 
safety over 10. You can take the 10 after you ski. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, because I'm not going to be over the water that long anyway to get Dude, tan lines. We're right? one word in. What is the other word? <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah, because I got a list here. Boat. Boat. That's interesting. Um, I guess like possible. Possible? Yeah. So like in, in different ways, like without the boat, there'd be no water skiing. You know, yes, there is cable water skiing where it's like a, a cable that goes around in your... What? Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's another thing. Yeah. It's not... <laughs> it's not behind a boat. It's like a... Imagine a, a and gigantic... And you're still skiing buoys? The, you can ski buoys with it, yeah. But that's not generally what you do? No. Like cab cable water skiing... It, didn't really pick up that much. I mean, it's a thing. There's tournaments and people... Really? But in wakeboarding, it, it's a big thing. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. So basically, you have no boats. Yeah, I know. I know. That's wild. So, but so yeah, the, the boat makes water skiing possible. For the most part. For the most part. <laughs> for the vast majority. Right. But also, different iteration of boats and how they developed made new scores possible. So oh. with the boats that we were using, say, even just like, 20 years ago, right? it would be much harder to do the scores that we're able to do today. Well, so Because the boats go faster now? No, because they have, say, a smaller wake, right? Oh, wow. They're engineered better. They're engineered better, exactly. Smaller wake. Smaller wake. The computer that controls the speed of the boat and keeps it at, say, 36 mm -hmm. consistently, that came out in 2008. 2009. Oh, that's recent. It's very recent. The G this is a GPS monitor computer. Before that, there was like um, a different kind of computer for 10 years. But like speed control systems, they changed the sport. So when the sport and was in its prime in the 80s, 90s, how was the boat then? With the driver that was trying to keep 36 miles per hour by what? compensating with the throttle. But no cruise control? No cruise control. <laughs> no, it was like insane. And it was a guy that would crone like stopwatch and make sure that you were at 36 say what yeah yeah it was crazy Get i'll show you some town. pictures after this it's insane he was like t he was like uh not measuring. the driver yeah so there was in the boat you had the driver the judge and then the stopwatch guy and the, <laughs> the stopwatch stop guy, guy. will look at the at the gate ball and then there were other reference buoys and the driver had to meet certain times so that they knew that if those times were met the boat was going at 36 Jesus. So if the driver fucked up, yeah, the the guy running the course didn't it didn't count. Well, yeah, exactly. They will get a rerun. Dude. They will get a rerun. Yeah, like I got all six of those, and now I got a rerun. Yeah, it happened a lot of times in those oh, days. Oh man! But you see, the the consistency of it was poor. Right now, with a Imagine. computer, everyone gets the same. Was there a lot of fights between the skiers and the drivers at the uh, time? I, I mean, fights. I don't know, but obviously, man. a lot of people were pissed off. I would imagine. Yeah. yeah. I'm trying the best I can up here, man. So, yeah, I think possible, you know, like makes water skiing a sport and it makes high performances possible. Like it, it's, a, it's an equipment-based sport. So, like, mm -hmm. if boats get better, if skis get better, you know, like scores can be achieved. Skis get better so, like, they get shorter? Because you said longer skis are harder to run. Not necessarily. No, that's, that's just the size of the ski. But, like, the different shapes, the different materials that they use different flex patterns you know there's a lot to a, the build of a ski that you know and that's that's like five episodes yeah for sure but I, I would imagine that ho has the best since that's your ski well i mean i guess i, I don't mean, know there's a lot of brands i'm wearing there, it you know? on your shirt right now yeah i am i mean you're repping I it i am it's the best ski there you go there you go yeah, see yeah. i figured i figured as much i mean i did see that one that got sent to the apartment Oh, yeah, yeah. And it was beautiful. Yeah, wasn't it? I also saw your reaction to <laughs> that, that you were going to get that it was in your room. Yeah, that's true. That was like... I was stoked. Uh, that looked like my brother on Christmas morning. <laughs> like one morning, like one year when he got the exact present he wanted. That's what it took me back to. Um, Good. Now, are you ready for the next one? Yeah, let's do it. I think that goes back to the sport being fun, by the way. Like... Yeah, you were excited. I mean, gen genuinely excited that you had a new ski. Yeah, and you know how many new years. skis I've had. You know, right, like, exactly. No, it's just like you're still pumped. a lot of fun. You're like, get out of my way! Are you serious? <laughs> like around yeah. your room. Um, next word. Not all of these are 
ski related necessarily. Okay. Just to preface, the next word is a uh, beard. Beard. Yeah. Wow. This feels more like an interview to me than what we had planned. Okay. Um, <laughs> comfort. Just what I see myself with. You yeah. know. I didn't know if it had special powers for skiing. No, it kind of looks like it when you're out there. Yeah, it kind of splits. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty sweet. No, no, just comfort, you know. Yeah. That's what I'm used to see. Yeah. Do most skiers have beards? lovely, long, flowing beards? No, no, <laughs> no. not most skiers. Okay. Some. Yeah. Some yeah. do, but not most. And just a handful. Just a handful, yeah. All right. Next word, jump. Jump. Um, uh, unique mm. unique so i used to jump as i told you before right and i was scared of shit like i wasn't jump is an extreme sport you gotta have that sort of like fear factor under control and i never had throughout my entire jumping days <laughs> and so when i when i sold my skis after my last tournament i'm like enough of this never gonna jump again really yeah 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 and then sure enough, after two or three years, I had a, you know, the itch a little bit to jump again. Yeah. And that feeling when you leave the ramp and you're like floating it, like you're going upwards in the air and then you're, you know, starting to sort of like prepare for landing. It's the best feeling in water skiing ever. What? Oh, for sure. For sure. I'm not a jumper. I'm not a great jumper, but it, that, I miss that. Wow. Yeah. There's nothing like it. Unique yeah yeah so i mean even then getting your six ball on you know 41 yeah no i mean that would be insane if i ever managed to do it yeah. but like what are you, i mean you've done feeling. what three at 41 two so in tournament three yeah in practice i got to four a few times was yeah. that a similar type feeling like or no no it's not the same uh it's much i mean i was stoked i was you I know imagine I was flexing uh, oh, using, yeah. using oh, the Coop yeah. Diddy terminology, yeah, but Excellent. I no in jump you're just getting this like adrenaline, okay. you know, like poof, you know, so like flying. That's interesting, and that's see, I know you said this feels like more of an interview, but I think I had a feeling that word association would tie in with some of my other thoughts, oh. and one of my other thoughts, and the question I had written down was about this idea of water skiing being an extreme sport, mm, mm -hmm, um, mm. because. You know, I've went out with friends, you know, um, from like Orange Theory, come out, check out skiing. You know, we talk and it seems like it's extreme. Yeah. I mean, because we've never done it. You're flying around that course. The shock and all kind of going back to where we started. It seems like it's an extreme sport. But you just said, interestingly, that jumping is the extreme sport. Yeah. You don't feel like slalom is extreme? Or there's another part to water skiing that we should mention too is tricks. tricks. Yeah, of course, of course. Right? Um, no, I don't. Th I don't think. I mean, I have a very interesting definition of extreme sport, and maybe you know, interesting. You, you, you could you could agree with me. Yeah. But uh, I think in an extreme sport, it makes it extreme because the more you're willing to risk, the more likely you are to perform well. Okay. The more that you're willing to risk, yeah, the more likely you are to perform well. Yes. So if you don't risk, you're not going to achieve higher levels of performance. Okay. Um, and in slalom, it's not necessarily like that. In tricks, it's not like that. Oh, no, even in tricks, it's not. No. But in jump, you have to be willing to go to the ramp faster, which makes it more likely if you do things wrong that you're going to crash and, and possibly get hurt. Okay. But you have to surpass that fear to be able to get to the ramp faster in order to potentially jump further. Right. So that's why I think it's an extreme sport. So there's no ski jumping. I don't think it's an extreme sport. Ski jumping? There's no ski jumping. Yeah. You might have seen it before. Like yeah, down. well, yeah. yeah. The, you don't think that's extreme? They're flying through the air. like. Yeah, but they're not. There's some risk of. Now, there's risk. F crashing when you land. But also, or not but hitting the ramp, right? Yes, but it's not that you have to risk more in order to go further. 
And that's what makes it extreme. And that's what makes it extreme. So let's say something like um, cliff diving. I would say for sure an extreme sport. And that's because you're risking more by going up higher and higher to to achieve more? Yeah. Okay. Because I would think that um, your boat's going 36, but you're going, you said, 65, 70 miles Somet- an hour sometimes. Yeah, so at the peak, yeah. <laughs> that sounds pretty extreme. And you're picking up G's, bro. Yeah. I mean, that sounds extreme to me. Like, okay, but if I not- go out there right now yeah. and you pull me and I get up and I'm slalom skiing and it's like a big smile on my face, you know, I might even cross a wake. That shit's not extreme, right? No, <laughs> okay. I'm just out there. I'm, yeah. I'm slalom skiing. It's fun. Yeah. It's cool. But now we start adding some speed and I'm trying to catch buoys. Yeah. <laughs> Turn buoys. <laughs> yeah. Turn buoys. Um, that's going to be start getting more extreme to me because now I'm taking the risk of trying to cut. No? Yeah. I mean, now I'm taking the risk of trying to do something other than just skiing. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't know. Mm-hmm. That's what it seems like to me. Yeah, but yeah, I, I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't think it fits. The, I mean, it, it's a fun sport. It's there's it looks a, extreme, extremely fun. It is extremely it? fun, but yeah. I don't know. It's an extreme sport. Like, so you don't have to risk. Say you're someone that runs, say like me, like two buoys at forty one off. Yeah, it's not that in order to run four buoys, I have to put myself on the line and risk more. You see? Okay. Whereas in jump, you, yeah, go on. If you're like a say a hundred and eighty feet jumper, in order to jump say two hundred feet f- far, like you have to turn later and cut harder and get to the ramp faster, so the the danger factor increases, right? Okay. Yeah. Um. So that's why I think it's an extreme sport. So, all right. But at tricks, you're not like trying to do riskier jumps or tr- like not no, jumps, like you're, flips you're doing or something. harder things. Like it's like gymnastics, so you're doing right. harder, f- you know, somersaults, harder spins. Um, so yeah, I don't yeah. know. Some of that shit with gymnastics seems pretty extreme to me, but I mean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah, so no, jump definitely unique. Yeah, unique, interesting. So going back to one other thing. And it was a question that I had written down. So, okay. Um, adrenaline. You mentioned there's a lot of adrenaline from mm-hmm. jumping. Do you get adrenaline from running courses at 36 miles an hour with behind a boat going 36? For miles? sure. For sure. You still get some adrenaline? Yeah. I think I got a little bit used to it now, you know? Okay. Um, but in terms of emotion and stoked, you know, for sure. You know, when I do, but it's, it's different, you know, like it's more, I do, I ski a pass that is really clean or like technically I hit some of the keys that I wanted to hit. And the so pass, you're talking post run. I, it kind of in, in between you, you feel it as you're doing it. You're like, okay, I'm doing it right. You know, but also as I finish the course, I'm like, yeah, that was, that was good. That doesn't sound as much like adrenaline to me though. That's what I'm saying. Like, I, I think I got used to it, you yeah. know? Um, but no, like you, you certainly have rush rushes of emotions when you when you're doing things right. Yeah, you know. Well, I mean, emotions like of being like pleased with yourself, right? Like having that bliss of maybe flow. Yeah, yeah. Being well, in like if a you flow state, I mean, it's rare, like in any other sport. But right. yeah, well, sometimes you have it. Right. But I'm talking about like, oh shit, this is an adrenaline rush, you know? Like, or I'm a little scared. You never feel that kind of nerves like I'm about to do, you know, no. 41, like, what is that? How many meters again? 10, 10, 10, 10, 10 and 10.25. And I actually have to go 11, you know, I have to make up for 11 and three quarters. 11 and a half. 11 and a half. Yeah. And, you know, that's not a, like, oh, shit moment. Like, because I think I would be like, oh, shit, I'm about to really try to stretch my body out, take this curve. Yeah, you know, it's, come back around, whip myself back around. Yeah, no, it's it's awesome, you know, like, but not adrenaline rush, not adrenaline, not like you're doing a roller coaster. No, 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 but jump, right? Jump is like doing a roller coaster. Okay, that's sort of like oh, I like, see. I, like I'm a novice. I I just assumed that every time you were going to run these things, you're getting a little bit of an adrenaline rush. Nah, no, maybe not anymore, or maybe. Or maybe I do. I I don't know. That's a good question. Yeah. I honestly don't know. 
Um, I wonder, I mean, like across the board, if other skiers kind of get, because I'd imagine it's different. Like if you're about to do for the tournament, you know, you're about to do a runoff. That's more like nerves though. Yeah. It's that's like an runoff. adrenaline, like, Oh, like I'm about to compete here. Yep. Here's some pressure. Here's some rather than adrenaline from the actual act of skiing. Exactly. So you know? that first kind of like nervousness, you know, in, intensity of focus, that's a constant thing in water skiing. That's ever present. Yeah. No matter the event, slalom tricks or jump, wakeboard, right. I don't care. It's ever there. In uh, tournaments, not in practice. Also in practice really? when you're pushing yourself to the limit. Like, okay. you know, um, 41 off is for me, say, or 22 off for someone else or 43 off for someone better than me. Like th those are intense focus moments, right? Mm -hmm. like in, not taking those lightly. No, you don't take that lightly. Right. You know, it's right. like when you're trying to do like a max rep in, in, on, you know, at the gym. You're getting psyched up. You're getting psyched up, but you're also like really, you know, right. focused. Yeah. You know, same as in skiing. Right. Um, you get psyched up before you ski? Ever hit yourself? No, I don't hit. No, not, not <laughs> that, uh, you okay. know, okay. monkey brain psyched up. Yeah. But, uh, uh. but no, I, yeah, of course. Accurate tournaments. Description of me in the gym. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. But no, yeah, I, I do. I do get psyched up, nice. you know, before yeah. tournaments or like today. Say today, I just came back from the lake. I, right, I was at the lake today. Perfect lake, super flat. Friends around, you know, no wind. Oh. I was feeling beautiful good. day. By beautiful the way, day. in Tallahassee. So yeah, I mean, you I was psyched, a psyched up. up. I was stoked to ski for sure. Yeah, that's tight. You know, yeah, yeah. Nice. Where are we at? I mean, I got I, now we're twenty. I can save words for next time. Um, obviously we're not going to do all these words. Oh, you, you have a I lot have, of words. I have at least 250 words. Oh my God. What's nah, this like the, the, the SAT? Yeah, yeah, I'm fucking with you. I know. Well, I do have that many words probably in my head that I yeah. can just start pulling from. <laughs> if I ran out. What about jolly? Um, wow. Um, how, how would I describe it? Like, uh, growing up for me you know like that's where i would spend my summers that's where i got out with two skis and i got to run 39 off you know like yeah. that's where i grew as a skier uh, and as a person really yeah like my coach is my second father you know that's awesome so so yeah no, that's to me is like uh, and now it's tradition you know mm -hmm. but personally personally it's like kind of growing up um yeah like what brought me to be the skier and the person i am today what do you mean tradition well because now we you know the the club has been open since 93 so you know they, wow. they've raised a lot of, we've raised a lot of athletes a lot mm -hmm. of competitors um hundreds and hundreds of people skied with us so obviously that's there's cool. a there's a bit of tradition involved with it right that's awesome um and you're starting i mean starting a tradition with the tournament Obviously, oh yeah, of six course. Six years in, that's and that's only the tradition. pro tournament. Like we started doing tournaments in the late nineties. Oh wow! You know, so we've been doing tournaments for a long time. That's awesome. Now you said something. I just want to clarify. You said you did two skis at thirty nine off. No, no, no. I did at Jolly. I went from learning how to ski on oh. two skis when I was like seven okay. or eight until you know running thirty nine off. Okay. Okay. There's no way you can run 39 off on two skis. <laughs> okay, yeah. I was about to say that's no, no, uh, no way. Can you do any? Can you do any skiing uh, buoys with two skis? Yeah, it's possible. It's very possible. And in fact, when you asked about how would you start someone, yeah, my coach started me with two skis, and then I had to learn how to run the course with two skis before I could go on with oh, one. Oh wow! Yeah. So if I went out to Lake 38, you know, yeah, next weekend. Next week I got a shit ton of homework. I can't do <laughs> stats and stuff. Um, the weekend after, okay, and um, said I want to run the course with two skis. You would be fine with that, or you'd be like, nah, bro. No, we like, can let's... try. No, no, for sure, for sure. Just if you want to do that, we could. But I think you, we go for the challenge. Not well, that the yeah. course wouldn't be a challenge enough, but oh, we sure. go for the challenge of one ski. Well, can I start with two just to yeah, to yeah, build to get my yourself confidence? Of course, and, like, get myself. Of course. It's going to be cold, man. I got wetsuits. Don't worry. So you ski in wetsuits during the winter. Yeah. Because I actually been, I've talked to a couple of people about me doing this podcast and the, f and they were saying how like, oh, he's about to shut down. And I'm like, no, he skis in the winter. 
Yeah. And they couldn't believe it. And I was like, I'll cover this on the podcast for you. <laughs> so You've been promoting this I before have. it even happened. That's have, awesome. Yeah. So I want to know, like, is it just you that ski and Dane that skis? Because I know Dane does, like, he skis on ice, right? Well, I mean, he bra- yeah, In there's Cincinnati. people that break ice to ski. Yeah. yeah. And Dane's... Dane's the man. He's a maniac. He'll do, he'll do that shit. Yeah, yeah, he did it. Yeah, but do other people other than you and Dane do that? They does, break. Fr- does Freddie ski on ice? Freddie used to break ice to ski. Whoa. Yeah. Okay. Well, hey, UK, UK, we already discussed. He's yeah, a he's different pretty, level. Yeah, exactly. Human, anyways. So. Well, but that, at the end of the day, that's why we all live in Florida because we don't want to do that, right? <laughs> right. We want to see. Well, we're kind of south of Georgia here, but yeah, I, mean, I know. But. Yeah, I mean it is Florida. It is Florida. Yeah. So. I mean, but, but let's not let's not lie to the people. It got it's down then in the 30s here. No, it's not. It does sometimes, not oh, right it, now, it does, but it, it does. does. Yeah, and yeah. when that happens, I'm not gonna ski. You're you know? not. No, okay. I mean, if, okay. unless I'm preparing for a tournament, I'm not gonna. Okay. I'm not gonna What's ski the coldest before. you've skied in? Probably water, 38, air, 38. 40. Woo! Yeah, and that's nothing. Compared to others, is nothing crazy. Yeah. What do you mean? Uh, people like, I mean, like Dane, like Dane and <laughs> and Freddie and them. Yeah. yeah. Oh, they've. You think they've done colder? Oh, for sure, for sure. Like I've heard stories of Dane skiing when it was snow outside. You know. Yeah. What well, I mean, he's an Ohio boy. So. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, for sure. But yes, to to feed the curiosity of your friends that wanted to know if I'm skiing in the winter. Right. I'll ski for a little bit more. But. Oh, you're about to shut it down. Yeah, but not because of the weather, just because it's nice to take a couple of months off, okay. regroup. Okay. The weather's not the deterring factor, really. No, not the main factor. Do you ever get the itch in, like, January? And you're yes. Like, I'm going to go fucking yes, ski. Yes, I, I do. I don't give a shit. Yes, I do. And it's cold. <laughs> you know? But it that's, do it. It's like my mom will golf and there'll be snow on the golf course. I'm like, you have problems. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, but she's just like, I need to golf. You know, I, yeah, well, water skiers are like that a lot. Yeah, yeah, you get the itch. You yeah, know? and uh, when you go out and do something like that, do you run buoys or you just kind of get behind the boat and kind of ski and just? Well, if I could, I wouldn't be skiing buoys. Wait, what? Like if I was in a body of water that was big enough where the course wasn't in, in the middle, yeah, I would just free ski. With one or two? Oh, one ski. Do you ever ski with two, or is that just stupid now? <laughs> no, no, sometimes I do, yeah. You do? Yeah, it's fun. Uh, okay. But, uh, I mean, it's a, bit, it's a bit of a different thing, right? Yeah. I, yeah. Well, I used to do a lot of it when I was jumping, because obviously jumping is with two skis. Hmm. So and tricks, right? Trick is one. Oh, it is. Trick is one. Oh, yeah. okay. Um, but jumping is two, and so you do a lot of, like, drills with two skis without the ramp, mm. like, to really become damn good on two skis, you know? Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. But so sometimes you'll go back to two, but, but now very rarely. Very, very rarely. Yeah. And you wouldn't do two at a course. If there's a course, you're gonna run one. Yeah. Although sometimes, you know, actually, if you give me some nice two skis, I'll probably run the course as well a little bit. Really? Yeah. Not at 36 miles per hour, right. but you know, like at yeah. 24, 26. Yeah. It goes back to just fun. Yeah. Yeah. Something different. There's a lot of things that you can do behind a boat. With mm. skis or, or similar, you know. Yeah. It's, a, yeah. it's a good lifestyle. It's yeah. a good lifestyle. Yeah, I mean, I miss skiing, but two. I mean, like, I don't yeah. really miss biting the dust with one repeatedly, <laughs> no, but- taking in loads of water. <laughs> and this is this is some suspect lake water up in Ohio, where, you know, where I'm from. So right. you didn't really want to ingest a whole lot of that. <laughs> <laughs> Whereas Lake 38 is beautiful. It is. And if I ingest some of that, I'll be fine. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. So getting people started skiing, you basically get them out there, two skis, Mm -hmm. and then kick up one off, or you're like, let's get you up with one? No, first you learn. I mean, personally, I like to get the kick off. You you do? So there's no shame in that? Not at all. Okay. Not at all. Okay. Uh, Because you're sort of bypassing the starting of the water we want, which is a bit of a next challenge, right? whilst getting to ski with one ski. Right. Like you're actually riding behind the boat with one ski. Yeah. Um, but then the natural step after that would be like deep water start with one ski. So if I wanted to use one leg and just like kick my foot off and just kind of hold my other legs instead of putting it behind me, mm-hmm. would that be a disadvantage? 
Yeah, like you wouldn't be. I would just think it's because when you bring that one foot behind, it gets kind of. That's when it gets swirly. I yeah, would I think if you were just kind of holding on to one, throwing your other foot up there would be. No, well, then if you're just behind the boat, yeah, maybe, maybe. Yeah. But then as soon as you start moving around, no, you, you want to have both feet to okay. stabilize yourself. So that's yeah. why you did it as a drill. Yeah. Because exactly. it made it more challenging to turn and to kind of get outside the wake. Exactly. And when you did that, did you do both feet? Like, would you practice with no, left just end? my my front foot, so right foot, leaving your um, opposite, your back foot off. Yeah, that's how you would practice. Yeah, do you still do that? No, I did. Oh, maybe I did it like two years ago in January. Actually, like, <laughs> here we go. We were at the lake. I just there. wanted to have some fun. And, yeah, you know, I just did the course. You did the whole course that yeah, way. Yeah, Keith loved it. He, he was <laughs> he was laughing his ass off in the boat. That's awesome. Fun. Yeah. Yeah. Can there be more than one person in the boat? Yeah, you can have up to, like, including the driver, up to three. Then it becomes a little bit, like, the wake obviously becomes bigger and oh. becomes a little harder to ski. Gotcha. You know? and, and I'm talking just any time, but, like, tournament, I'm sure that only certain people are allowed in there. Tournament, yeah. So you have the driver and the judge. No coach? No coach in the boat. In slalom. In tricks, you have the coach as well. Gotcha. And in jump, just judge and driver. And uh, sometimes the coach is on the shoreline giving hand signals to the jumper, like giving them some feedback, you know. Oh, okay. Yeah. Like, go faster into it. Don't be a yeah, yeah. candy ass. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, part of that. Oh, and also some technical stuff. Yeah. Okay. It, can you do technical stuff with you and slalom? On the, on, the, on the shore? Yeah. Yeah, but... I wouldn't be necessarily looking at the shore when I'm skiing, so they would have to be at the end of one one end of the lake, and then, you know, uh, I come back and they say... What about like a walkie-talkie system? Yeah, but it's uh, it's not really a thing. It's not helpful enough that people would want to do it? I think... I don't know. No, I don't, really? I don't think it's like a major thing, you know. Um, yeah, no, I think it's... It might actually be detrimental. Wow. You know, because then it gets you to think about your technique, whereas in tournament, yeah. you just want to perform, right? Yeah, right. Um, yeah. Interesting. And I know in some sports, um, like, you can't go back and look at the tape until after the tournament or the sport is concluded. Mm -hmm. Is that the same in your sport? Like, if you finish and you want to go back and watch yourself ski to look at different things, and could you do that? From the official camera in the boat, like the judge's camera, no, until the tournament is over. Okay. Um, but, uh, no, I mean, someone could take a video of me from the shore and I could watch it right away. And gotcha. that happens all the time. Really? Yeah. And is that help helpful? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, so after you ski and you're done your tournament, then you watch yourself and see what you did wrong, what you did well. Well, I didn't know if maybe, like, after you did that, you, there's sometimes runoffs. So yeah. I didn't know if, like, oh, okay, that's what I was doing there in that moment an hour ago. Like, let's yep. try not to, let's Yeah, yeah, for sure, yeah. for sure. And you're allowed to do that. Yeah, yeah, you're allowed to do that. Gotcha. You know. Yeah. Yep. I didn't know if that was considered cheating. No, no, it's not. It's cool. not. Nice. I feel like we're at a good spot to wrap it up. How, how long have we been at this? Uh, an hour and 30. Oh, that's, wow, <laughs> yeah. beautiful. 90 minutes? 90 minutes. Of lots of learning. I don't know, man. I don't know don't what think. anyone will, will learn out of this. <laughs> we'll see. Well, I mean, it's just the first one. It's true. And hopefully they get entertainment, you know, like right. they're going to the lake or they're going to work even worse. And, you know, they yeah. listen to Coop and I, you know, just talking the shit out a bit about skiing. That's right. If we can brighten someone's day, that's good enough. No, Maybe encourage somebody new to go out and try it. Oh, hopefully. Or, that would be the best. I mean, because I like my circle is not a water seeking circle. Right. Right. Like a lot of the people that I'm, you know, I coach at Orange Theory. Yeah. That I have friends from here at school that would probably tune in. Yeah. And, you know, I think it'd be encouraging for them to know like, uh, okay, you can start at any time. There's a method to how people can get into the sport, mm -hmm. you know, and it sounds like from what you were saying, the da the dangerous part of the sport is jumping. Yeah. Like if you go out to try to ski, you're 
mostly going to be safe. Yeah, going to be safe. Because like be it, it goes back yeah. to the shock and all, and my thought of it being an extreme sport where I could see some people being like, no, I can't do that. I'm going to hurt myself. Yeah, that's crazy. They're pulling G's out here. I don't pull G's. <laughs> you know. Yeah, yeah. So, I but mean, that was kind of part of what I I wanted this to be something for newer people mm -hmm. to the sport to understand something about the sport itself and maybe to feel welcomed into the sport. Yeah, no, and I think that's that's brilliant and that's why I think what we're doing here is pretty cool. You know, like I my hope with this podcast in general is that hopefully people get, you know, exposed to the the sport and that they give it a shot. Or maybe they used to ski like yourself and right. you've been skiing twenty years. Exactly. Get it stumble upon this podcast like, oh man, I kinda wanna get back at it. You know? Yeah. Um and certainly even better if someone that just stumbles upon it and has never skied You're right you know or maybe Hopefully, they have friends that ski and they oh, just yeah friends that ski yeah you know yeah so no i think it uh i think it's pretty good you is, know is that i mean because you're you're awesome you're a cool guy you know you're welcoming keith yeah. and karen are extremely kind yeah extremely welcoming is that typical of what you're gonna find yeah, out there like is say, the community of water say, skiing yeah, pretty open they are very open and i mean it's about fun it's about you know just, absolutely i'll okay. just give you an example like there's like skiing it's almost like you belong to a certain you know but but people are super welcoming they want you to learn how to ski but if you meet someone you're a skier and you meet someone that is a skier is that immediate bond no, that's cool. Almost like, you know, I'm going to trust him. He's a skier, you know, <laughs> <I like laughs> which it. is it healthy? I don't know, but like, <laughs> right, it's right. kind of like, worry about that later. You know, worry about that later, but right. like you do feel part of that community, but at the same time, it's an inclusive community, you know, like you've seen Keith, mm -hmm. Keith is super generous guy. Absolutely. But he's also the prototype of the typical water ski maniac. Like you meet someone that tells you, Hey, never skied. I like to try let's do it you know like yeah. let me teach you how to ski so that is pretty typical well from that, people. this part of it yes okay um the generosity that keith has i think it's that's no atypical. short of that's yeah very, no short of inspiring yeah, you know and very inspiring you know but and um going back to unique absolutely yeah. absolutely but that sense of like you know you've seen me like you, you said you, you tried skiing twice i'd be like dude i want to get you back on skis right even if sure. we weren't friends you right know, like, yeah so okay. you know yeah, Definitely and I think inclusive. that's a good message to send out to people that are like, well, I'd never be able to do it. No one's going to have the patience for me. No, 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 you know? absolutely not. Because that. You, that is one thing, I mean, thinking back to when I was younger and skied, you have to, be, you do have to be patient to learn it. Yep, So, like any technical sport, right? Exactly, and it's going to be important to have a patient coach as yep, well. For sure. Like, you have to go into it being patient, which I think most people – would understanding that it's not easy mm -hmm. but they'd want to make sure that they have somebody that's going to be patient with yeah them, for sure you know, you know? for sure so. um no it, it is it is a fun sport and it's super accessible like you know you you have three-year-olds that ski you what? have 85 year olds three-year-olds yeah yeah that's pretty sure. young there's uh water there's what uh ski, squirrels that can water ski yeah well, if you've ever seen it yeah i have it's yeah. depressing that that's the most viewed <laughs> video about water skiing really on YouTube. yeah is it squirrel, really yeah a squirrel that wa yeah. squirrel can water ski yeah yeah it's pretty <laughs> depressing but um <laughs> but the second most hits would be this podcast that well yeah there we go. for sure yeah i like that you know yeah for sure we're shooting a little high but you know well i mean that's what you got to do yeah i know you got to set your aim high we are we yeah. are and we're gonna continue to set it with this absolutely i look forward to uh hosting again i appreciate you the founder um, <laughs> take over what if i yeah. host the next time and you're you're here maybe we switch roles next time what are you gonna ask me questions but why not i mean i'm an open book <laughs> <laughs> that's fine no well yeah we'll do it again this yeah. is fun yeah without a doubt and then you know, as you said, hopefully someone gets something out of it. I think they will. Um, I, I see that you're pessimistic about it, but <laughs> <laughs> I don't you know. know. I hope so. At least it was fun for us, you know. Well, that's true. Yeah, I think that I think the viewers will realize how much fun we had with it. Well, they're not really viewers; listeners. Yeah. Will realize how much fun we had with it, and they'll have some fun 
that's as true. well. You know? That's true. Because you can tell we're we're authentic about it. So we it's are. Like, we are. That's all. That's the most important thing. Not a lot of notes. I mean, yes, some stuff written down there, but that's very little. Yeah, I had it jotted in my iPhone like Drake. Drake <laughs> puts his lyrics in his phone, so I thought. Wow. You know, I'd do the same. Sure. Prepared, but I didn't really need it too much, <laughs> except for the word association, which we have words that will carry over to the next. To the next episode. For sure. Sounds to good. To the next episode, just like the Dre song. <laughs> <laughs> All right, final words, anything? Um I I ain't got shit to say. Okay. Yeah, it was I mean, I got a lot more to say, but we're out of time. Yeah, we are. I'll out save of time. it. I'll save it for the next verse. All um, right. Yeah. All right. Well, Appre- other than I appreciate you uh allowing me to host. No, know? of course, pleasure. Any, anytime. Yeah. We'll do it again. Without a doubt. Okay. It's got to happen again. I'm hooked now. So am I. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Signing off, Coop Diddy's uh, first episode, Learning Scoop Water Skiing with Coop Diddy. Learning Water Skiing with Coop Diddy. Yes. See you next time. See you next time. Do 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 do